Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss some steps that you can take in order to assess and manage multivariate non-normal data when carrying out path analysis in R with the Levon package. Standard maximum likelihood estimation assumes multivariate normality of endogenous variables within your structural equation model. More severe cases of non-normality can produce an inflated model chi-square and a downward bias in standard errors. An inflation in model chi-square can lead to a researcher to incorrectly reject a model that is reasonably specified, and a downward bias in standard errors can lead to an increase in type 1 error when making inferences about population parameters. So in those cases where there is evidence of multivariate non-normality, you should consider possible correctives to reduce any potential biasing effects that the assumption violation may have on your solution. One possible approach to dealing with endogenous variables that fail to exhibit reasonable evidence of multivariate normality is to utilize the satora bentler chi-square and any additional robust model fit statistics to evaluate the overall model fit, as well as robust standard errors uh, when you're carrying out tests of model parameters. Another option might be to utilize bootstrap procedures in order to evaluate overall model fit and to test the individual parameters within your model. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate both approaches using the Levon package in R. And, uh, but before I do that, I'm actually going to start off by uh, showing you how you can uh, quickly obtain output that will help you to evaluate the multivariate normality assumption. Also, I do want to point out that this video is a continuation from a previous one on path analysis using Levon. So a link to that video, as well as a co copy of the data in CSV format, and this text file will be made available underneath the video description. So it may be helpful to you to watch the previous video to understand where I'm picking up in this presentation. So the model that we are testing and uh, that I reviewed in that previous video looks like this, where basically we have SES, mastery goals, and performance goals. Uh, these variables all predicting interest. You can see mastery and performance goals predicting anxiety. And then we have interest, mastery, and anxiety predicting achievement. So basically, interest and anxiety are serving as mediators within the model. And I do want to uh, uh, note the distinction between exogenous variables and endogenous variables. So endogenous variables, which is what we're really concerned about when we're evaluating multivariate normality, uh, are those variables that have arrows pointing to them within the model. So we're basically explaining variation in these variables as a function of uh, variables upstream, so to speak. So you can see that we have three uh, endogenous variables within our model, which are in interest, anxiety, and achievement. So once you've uh, downloaded your data, uh, you can actually just use this code right here. I'm just going to copy it and paste it into R uh, to read it in. And the data is actually already contained in my download folder. So I'm, the first thing you have to do, though, is make sure that you uh, point R to the directory that contains uh, your data. So I'm going to point this to downloads, click on OK. And I'm going to paste this in and hit Enter. And we'll take a quick look at the data, too, uh, by using the structure function. So I'm just going to type in str and then inside parenthesis process data in parenthesis and enter. So you can see that we have our variables uh, that we're going to be using. And then some of the variables are not going to be used in our demonstration. So the package that we're going to be using to evaluate um, multivariate normality for our endogenous variables is the MN. MVN package. And so I'm going to use a library function to call that package up. So I'm just going to type in library and inside parenthesis MVN in parenthesis. And so it's ready to go. Now keep in mind that if you haven't already installed that package, you're going to need to do that first. And you can use that, uh, do that by using the install packages function. Now, given that our data set uh, contains more da uh, variables than we really want to be working with when we're evaluating uh, multivariate normality, uh, what I'm going to do is actually create a new data frame that, that is a subset of that original uh, data frame. Our, our uh, original data frame is process data. And what w I really want to do is create a new data frame that contains the achieve variable, the interest variable, and the anxiety variable. Those are the endogenous variables within my, within my model. 
So the way that I'm going to do this, and I've actually kind of highlight, highlighted it for you, is I'm going to create a new data uh, frame. It's, we're going to call it new data, and you, we have an arrow pointing to it, and then I've got the name of the original data frame, which is process data. Inside, uh, you, you'll notice that I've got uh, brackets right here, and inside I've got a C, and then uh, inside the parentheses I've got the names of those three endogenous variables contained in quotation marks. So let's um, actually go ahead and copy that, and I'm going to paste this into the R um, interface as well and hit enter. And so now we can take a quick look at our new uh, data frame. So I'm just going to use the structure function again, and I'm going to type in new data and hit enter, and there you go. So now you can see it says data frame, and it's got those three variables in there. So now I'm ready to uh, use the um, uh, MVN package in order to uh, look at uh, multivariate normality. So kind of scrolling down in the um, text file, I've got some information about how to kind of uh, look at uh, or evaluate multivariate normality based on output um, generated from this package. But kind of scrolling down right here, you can see that we're going to use the MVN function. And you'll notice that inside the parenthesis, I've got the name of our uh, new data frame, which I'm just calling new data, then a comma, and then MVN test equals, and inside quotation marks, Mardia. So I'm actually just going to copy this and paste it in and hit enter. And so now you can see that we have multivariate test results. So you'll notice that we up here we've got Mardia skewness and uh, p-value, and then result basically uh, indicating whether or not there's a deviation from multivariate normality. Uh, and so with Mardia skewness, you can see the result, it says yes. And that's basically indicating that the data appears to be uh, consistent with multivariate normality with respect to skewness. When we're looking at Mardia kurtosis right here, you can see there's a p-value, it's 0 0.049. And so basically anything less than 0 0.05 would be deemed as uh, indicating a deviation from multivariate normality. And so you can see right here the result is no. So we have evidence of deviation from multivariate normality with respect to kurtosis. And then this next line right here, line three, uh, this is basically taking sort of a joint result from those two previous tests. And so the conclusion would be that uh, we have evidence that the data is not consistent with multivariate normality. Now, down below, you can also see that we have a uh, univariate test for normality. So you have Shapiro-Wilk uh, for the achieved variable. And uh, right here, it says yes. So th basically, um, this is indicating that uh, the achieved variable appears consistent with univariate normality, whereas the Shapiro-Wilk test for the interest variable, uh, we have a no right here. And that's because our p-value uh, is less than 0 0.001. And that's indicating a deviation from normality with respect to the interest variable. And then for anxiety, we have the same sort of situation right here where we have evidence of a deviation from normality. Now, there are a couple of graphical approaches in here as well. Uh, you'll notice that using the same function, and then there's new data again. And I'm going to generate a multivariate plot, basically a QQ plot. So you'll see it says multivariate plot, capital P right there. Uh, and that's equal to QQ, and that's enclosed in quotation marks. So let's take a quick look and see what this uh, appears as. So there you go. There's our uh, QQ plot. And you can see right here that basically what we're looking for is the data to, to fall uh, along this regression line right here. And you can see that the data is really kind of departing up here. So that would be some evidence, again, of uh, non-normality. We can also use the multivariate outlier method uh, right here. And you'll notice that uh, the O right here uh, is in caps, as well as the M right here. So uh, make sure that you have the case uh, for the, um, uh, within this uh, correct, or else uh, the, the R won't recognize the, uh, the argument there. So you'll see it says equals, and then inside quotation marks, uh, quant. So, that's just basically for quantile. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste this in as well and hit Enter. And so this is what it's going to look like. And so you can see that these are all cases that would be deemed as potential multivariate outliers. 
Now, it's also uh, possible to generate univariate plots as well using the MVN func uh, function right here. In this case, I've got univariate plot with the, there's a capital P right there, equals, uh, and inside quotation marks, histogram. And then the next one is a box plot. So I'll just kind of copy this one for the histogram and uh, enter it. And so now you can see that we have histograms that are given. And I can also change this as well. I'll just change this to box so you can see what that looks like. And so now you can see a box plot showing up for our three variables. So in general, it looks like there's uh, some evidence for uh, multivariate normality for our endogenous variables. So we can still basically specify our model in the same way that we did in our previous video. Um, so this is just uh, a rehash of all the code that I went over uh, in that earlier video. But then when it comes to fitting the model, we have to take into account uh, the non-normality for those endogenous variables. So we do that when we're running our analysis using the Levine function. So up here, just really quickly going back to our syntax, we, I've uh, created an object that's called model that contains the specification for uh, the model, or all the specifications for the model, what parameters that we're estimating and so forth. So when we're running our model, you'll notice I'm creating a, uh, an object down here, uh, fit, which is going to contain our output. And uh, so looking at our syntax right here, you'll see I, got, I have fit, uh, basically a um, an arrow pointing to it, which is just a less than sign and then a hyphen. Then I'm using the Levine function right here. Inside the parenthesis, I've got model, which is uh, what I just kind of went over right up here. This is um, containing our model specification, comma data, and you, then you'll notice that I've got process data. So that's the original data frame that I'm using uh, that contains both our endogenous and exogenous variables then comma, and then estimator. So this is a new argument um, relative to what I've shown you previously. So in this case, we're typing in estimator equals, and inside quotation marks, uh, MLM, and all, that's in all caps, uh, followed by a comma, and then SE for standard errors uh, equals, and then inside quotation marks, robust. So what this is going to do is give me uh, the satora bentler chi square uh, as well as robust standard errors. And that's going to be one way in which we can account for the uh, non-normality for our endogenous variables. So I'm going to copy that, paste it in right here, and hit Enter. And so now let's just take a quick look. So we'll type in summary and then uh, fit. So, um, and then I'll also type in, uh, we'll also type in fit dot measures. Uh, equals true, and then hit enter so that we can get all of our output. So scrolling up here, you'll notice that it says scaling correction factor for the satora bentler correction. So basically this is it right here. Um, and basically this is the satora bentler chi-square value, and there's the degrees of freedom, and then there's our p-value. The original maximum likelihood estimation without the correction for non-normality, uh, that's the... Uh, chi-square value, degrees of freedom, and then the p-value. As you're scrolling down, you'll also notice that we have uh, the comparative fit index. So this is from the original model. And then this is a robust uh, comparative fit index. So you'll notice under the robust column, that's it right there. There's the Tucker-Lewis index right here and uh, that value. Now down here, you'll also see another robust comparative fit index and a robust Tucker-Lewis index. So that's what these values are right here. And in an interesting article by uh, Savali from 2018, uh, that author recommends the use of this, the uh, robust comparative fit index and the robust Tucker-Lewis index, and also the robust RMSEA. So kind of going back here, and so that they're basically arguing in favor of this uh, and this as opposed to the other robust versions. And then scrolling down, you'll see we have the RMSEA right here, and then a robust version as well. But then, again, Savali is really basically arguing for the use of this robust RMSCA, and there's the value right there, along with the 90% 90, 90 confidence interval. As you scroll down a little bit further, you'll notice that uh, it says right here, standard errors, and it's set at robust.sem uh, right there. So these standard errors uh, for all of the uh, parameter estimates are adjusted for 
uh, basically the non-normality. So these are all robust standard errors. So then uh, that makes our, our, uh, tests, uh, our test statistics and p-values, uh, we, we can have more confidence in those as opposed to uh, before when we would not have adjusted for that by using the uh, standard maximum likelihood estimates. Now, as I said before, another option that you can uh, use uh, when dealing with multivariate non-normality is uh, to utilize bootstrap. So we're going to uh, generate uh, the Bolenstein uh, bootstrap results as well as be able to test individual uh, model parameters using uh, bootstrap standard errors. So to do this, uh, we're going to still basically keep pretty much the same structure for this part of where we're actually uh, generating our output using the Levine function. But now instead of what we did before where we had estimator equals MLM and then SE, uh, the standard errors is set to robust, here I'm typing in test equals and inside quotation marks Boland.Stein and then for the standard error we're using bootstrap so that's in quotation marks as well. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in as well and hit enter and it takes a few seconds because um, it's actually performing the bootstrap procedure um, and so it, it basically uh, is going to generate uh, a thousand bootstrap uh, st uh, samples. Okay, so now it's uh, ready to go and so what we'll do is we'll use the summary function again. So I'm going to type in summary then fit um, and then fit.measures equals true and now what we'll do is we'll get our output. So here it is and kind of scrolling up right here you'll notice that it's got P value for the Bolenstein bootstrap and you can see um, that we have uh, an indication of statistical significance. So that would be an, basically an indication that the model is not fitting the data uh, well. So if the Bolenstein bootstrap uh, result is statistically significant, then that would be an indication of poor model fit. As you scroll down, you'll see that we have a lot of the same uh, fit indices that uh, we discussed before, but you'll notice that there aren't any of those robust test statistics that we were talking about uh, in, the, in the previous demonstration. As we scroll down, you can also see for the standard errors right here, it says number of bootstrap draws, the default is 1,000. And so all of these standard errors right here are based on uh, bootstrap uh, procedure. So basically, um, as you can see, all the, the Z values and P values, this is just basically uh, allowing us to test the statistical significance uh, for the parameters within the model. And again, those test results are designed, or rather are adjusted, for uh, the presence of non-normality. Uh, one other thing to note, too, is that if you want confidence intervals for the parameter estimates, you can also get those as well. Uh, basically, what we can do is type in parameter estimates with a capital E in there, and then we'll just type inside the parenthesis fit. And so now these confidence intervals right here uh, these are also based on the bootstrap results. So that pretty well concludes uh, this demonstration. Uh, I know it's a lot to cover and really I couldn't go into nearly as much uh, on interpreting the results as I would have liked, but if you uh, download the uh, text file that, I'm going, that I've uh, presented uh, right here, there's a lot of information in here and again if you go to the end uh, there's a lot of uh, information references. I also have some websites where you can download some relevant articles as well. So um, at any rate I appreciate you watching.